To talk more about the fallout from yesterday's strike, we're joined by independent political commentator Nirvana Mahmood. And Nirvana, we are already seeing the consequences of yesterday's attack, aren't we, on the oil price. Uh, it reached a seven-year high today. Are we entering a new era of instability in the Gulf? Indeed, Laura. Uh, uh, let's just put this in perspective. What happened yesterday is an attack from about 1,500 kilometers from Sana'a in Yemen on the United Arab Emirates oil facilities uh, in Abu Dhabi, the capital. Uh, and it used, uh, the Hosi used um, a combination of cruise missile, ballistic missile and drones. This is unprecedented and a new stage in the confrontation between the Hosi and all the Iranian proxy and the Gulf states in the Yemen conflict. To put things in perspective, also the head of the Hosi negotiation team uh, was in Tehran uh, on Monday and met the Iranian president Raisi. And from Tehran, he in or indirectly pointed out to the United Arab Emirates and described it as a small state in the region serving the American-Israeli interest. That is huge admission, A, that the Hosi are not backing down, and B, it's about the tacit support of Tehran that didn't even bother to condemn the attack even by verbal words. So we, we saw that strike by uh, the Saudi-led coalition in Yemen today. Do you think that yesterday's attack will make the Emiratis more or less committed to the conflict in Yemen? I found it difficult to see that the Emirati will back down. Uh, this is an attack on their soil. Before the Saudi Arabia were attacked and the Emirati showed support for Saudi Arabia. But now if they back down, at least now and in the recent uh, future, they will look as if they are bowing down to the Iranian, which is something they cannot afford in front of their own audience after they've been attacked on their own soil. Uh, you mentioned the attack on Sana'a and the attack of Sana'a have killed a, a senior commander in Hosi and allegedly 12 others of senior Hosi members. Uh, that is huge, and that is a huge message that the Emirati are not backing down. Now, uh, the United States um, condemned the attack a few hours after it happened uh, and then promised to coordinate a response uh, with the Emiratis. Uh, at the same time, though, they are holding talks, negotiations in Vienna with the Houthis' backers, Iran. How can that work? Right. Uh, just want to remind your audience that um, uh, a year ago, President Biden have revoked the designation of Hosi as a terror group, which was done by his predecessor, President Trump. A lot of people in uh, in the uh, think tanks and all the politicians in the Gulf states have pleaded with him not to do so, but he gone ahead and did it. Uh, now everybody is expecting from the United um, from the United States to back and reverse that decision. But as you rightly mentioned, the uh, the American now are in a delicate phase in the negotiation in Vienna. And uh, I think from what we see and what we hear, they are not willing now to risk uh, ending these talks in failure. Uh, we can say a lot about the Iranian, but they, they clearly reading the American scene very well. An unpopular president, all the polls are saying he's down. Uh, we are near the midterm election, and he is he's, he wants to present something to his audience. Reversing and making a U-turn, admitting that he was wrong in Yemen, is going to be very difficult for the American administration. And just very briefly, Nirvana, uh, the Emiratis themselves have tried to mend relations with Iran. Uh, will this force them to reconsider? Well, uh, not to reconsider, the, um, the Emirati always were open to a relationship with Iran, but it's about the timing. The timing now will not be about the Iranian looking for rapprochement with the Iranian. They, this is the last thing they will do. Uh, but in the future, it depends on how everybody else will behave. The Emirati are looking for support.